Today I am filming from Rachel's Cafe in beautiful Bloomington, Indiana. So there will be a little bit of background noise, but be patient. Um, I'm showing you this place because it is my favorite place in town for getting coffee and do some gaming at the same time. They have some very large tables here. So I'm not getting paid to, to say this, but if you're in town, you're looking for a place uh, where to play a game, get a good coffee and a good snack, this is a very good choice. The game that I played here today is Red Baron by Worthington Games. It is a free game that you get for free when you order their Guns of August. Red Baron, clearly a game of air combat in World War One. It's a two-player game. It's a fairly abstract one, not very realistic, but who knows? There are a lot of games that are abstract, not realistic, and still fun. Is this one of those? Well, today we're going to find out. The rulebook is very short. It is only a sheet of paper folded in two. It has a lot of illustrations. These days, I'm also suspicious of short rulebooks more than of long rulebooks because the short ones seem to leave a lot of things unexplained. Not here. The rulebook really tells you all that you need to know. Very minor complaint is that the only table that you need to look at in the game is this one, which is in the rollbook, but you can just fold the rollbook in such a way that this page is visible, it's on top, and then you use this page here as a player aid, so no particular problem really. Components in this game look really nice. You have a map which is printed on cardboard and looks pretty nice. You have counters that also have nice illustrations and are laminated, so they're very sturdy, very strong and durable. Then each player will have a deck of maneuver cards, and again, they're both functional, easy to read, and just nice looking. So I really like the quality of the components, it's pretty good. What you see here is the initial setup. You have half of the map which belongs to the LA player and the other half belongs to the German player. Then each player starts the game with several anti-aircraft units on the board and each player can choose where to place his anti-aircraft units on his side of the map as long as it's not in any of these squares that have a bold they have bold edges around them. Then each player also secretly chooses six air units and players have three types of air units. There are balloons, bombers and fighters. And each unit has an arrow which indicates the facing of the unit. Also each unit has two sides. One is when the unit is in good health and that one to indicate that the unit has taken a hit. A unit that took a hit takes another hit and that unit is gone. So at the beginning of the game the players choose the units that they want to use and they can choose any uh, mix of units. They can have more fighters or more bombers or only fighters. Any combination is fine. They choose it, the unit secretly and then they place them on these two areas at the beginning, uh, at the two sides of the map. Then each player takes his own deck of maneuver cards and then you're ready to start playing the game. Each turn in the game is divided in five rounds and each turn has a first player and a second player and these two roles are reversed next turn and it's this distinction between first and second player is extremely important in terms of strategy. The two players will select a maneuver card from their deck and they will play it face down uh, secretly without revealing it um, at the same time so they're both committing to a maneuver card at the same time then the first player suppose the ally player the first player will announce the unit that will execute that maneuver suppose he says well I'm gonna play this card on this airplane here and the German player at that point will have to uh, commit to a unit say oh I'm gonna play this on whatever unit on his side he wants to play it on then the two players reveal their cards and they simply execute the maneuver. In this case, the LA player played a straight, so I can move this airplane here by one, two or three spaces forward. And the German player executes his maneuver. And you just repeat the process again. Again, they commit to a car secretly, then the first player commits a unit, second player has the advantage of seeing what unit is going to be moved by the first player, reveal the card execute the maneuver. In this case, for example, the LA player played a roll right and he had committed to this airplane. Suppose he did that and then he can move that by one or by two, rolling it right without changing facing. You repeat this process of committing to maneuver cards for five times. Once five maneuvers have been executed, the maneuver cards go back to the original decks, the turn is over and you start a new turn in which the second player is now the first player and vice versa. 
if during movement or at the end of movement an air unit finds itself on top of an enemy anti-aircraft unit then anti-aircraft fire occurs in this case you flip the anti-aircraft unit and you will reveal a number between 1 and 4 then you will roll 1d6 or you will draw a combat sheet these combat sheets have numbers between 1 and 6 so it is exactly the same as rolling a die but I guess it just looks a little cooler this way Whichever way you're getting a number, if you obtain the number which is equal to or less than the number printed on the enter aircraft unit, then the enter aircraft fire is successful and you deal a hit to the airplane. So you will flip a fresh unit to its hit side or you will just remove a hit unit from the game. Once all movement has been completed, then you have air-to-air -air combat. Only fighters can fire in this phase, but all fighters that are in position to do so will fire. Fighters can fire up to three squares away from their facing side, and from that one only, they only fire in a straight line. And in this case, for example, this fighter will fire this balloon at a range of two, and the balloon cannot return fire. These two fighters will fire at each other at a range of three. This fighter will fire at this fighter here at a range of two and will not get fire in return. This fighter here will also fire without getting return fire, but will fire at a range of three and will have a plus one because that is the bonus that you get when you're firing at somebody through their rear side. All air to air combat is simultaneous and it is resolved using this table here. It is a very simple procedure. You roll a d6 or you draw a combat chip, you apply a plus one modifier in case you execute an air attack, and then depending on the distance that you are firing from, you will have different odds of getting a miss result or a hit result. For each friendly card play in which one of your balloons is in one of these yellow squares representing no man's land you gain a victory point for each friendly car play in which one of your bombers is situated in an enemy target square which are these squares with the ball edges then you gain a victory point for each enemy units that your fighters shoot down then you gain five victory points pretty sweet so players keep playing cards, moving airplanes and firing at stuff until a player reaches a total of 23 victory points. The first player to do so is the winner. And this basically is the game. I'm filming this segment later in the day, actually quite late into the night, but I also got a chance to play the game more in the meanwhile. I'm this close to the camera and speaking softly because my daughter is very lightly asleep. She's teething, so she doesn't sleep much and we really don't want to wake her up. Red Baron. This game is surprisingly fun and rewarding. After reading the rules, I thought, ah, oh, this looks a little dull. And every time I explain the rules, to an opponent because I played the game with several people they look at me like oh let's give it a go but I don't really have high expectations from this after a couple of turns because the first turns are a little slow the airplanes are just reaching the center of the board after a couple of turns we regularly found ourselves quite drawn in into the game because then you realize that at the core this really is a bluffing game it's a game in which you're trying to outsmart and outthink your opponent. It's one of those I think that he thinks that I think that he thinks that I think that he thinks type of game, but at the same time, it does not become too cerebral, it does not become too much of a <clears throat> brain burner however you really um, what you're really trying to do is to get your opponent to put himself in trouble to put himself in a position where you can fire at him uh, with a god bonus precisely why while he is thinking that he's doing that to you precisely what you're thinking he's thinking that he is tricking you and sometimes yeah he will be a step ahead of you while he is letting you believe that you're a step ahead and there have been times where this resulted in some very interesting situations there was a time where i had planned a long-term maneuver i thought i was as cunning as a fox graduating in cunning at the university of oxford and then my opponent looped around me and started firing at my airplane in the tail pretty bad and i had a good laugh i could only admire the cleverness and the elegance of the maneuver so it is this sort of game 
Uh, it doesn't feel much like a war game, definitely there are things that in terms of theme uh, do not make much sense, you will have airplanes that will just be hanging out and being parked in the same spot in the middle of the sky for turns and turns, it doesn't make much sense, why the fact that you use a certain card earlier in the turn will limit your ability to maneuver with other airplanes, why the fact that uh, if an airplane rolls right then another airplane will be limited in rolling right too because you don't have that card anymore. Uh, again, it doesn't make sense in terms of a war game, but remember that this is really an outsmart, you know, thinking game actually because a player uh, plays certain cards and you think that he's limited in a certain in certain maneuvers, then you may build your strategy around it and maybe he's counting on you doing that. You, you can become a little paranoid while playing this game, but it is all good, it is all fun. It's really enjoyable, really light um, bluffing game. Um, also, you can't beat the prize. It's great that it comes for free with Guns of August. Uh, I haven't played this game yet, but well, let me tell you if it's a good game, then the two games together really uh, make a, quite a good package. And well, you know me, I'll play Guns of August at some point and I'll report to you. So stay tuned and you'll see.